Starving Artist, uh, aka That Joker Guy. Uh, I've been asked a few different times to do makeup tutorials, um, and I've done this makeup a lot for a lot of years now, um, and even from when I started to now, it's gotten better. I mean, it's still not perfect. Um, there are a lot of people out there who... This makeup specifically is something very... It has to be suited to your face. My face is similarly shaped, but some people have exactly the correct shape of face. You can cheat it with makeup, but I just tend to go with the shape of my face. Sometimes I'll do in a few lines. Hi, uh, this is that Joker guy from the, the future. Uh, just telling you that this is the uh, final look that he, he is uh, planning on doing right now. All right, get back to it. Okay. So, first things first, before doing anything, I have to shave. So, now, to start, I'm going to show you two different ways to do it, but I'm going to kind of blend them together as one tutorial. To start, what I usually do is make sure I have all of my makeup and everything here with me. So, I use the Bin Nye Clown White, as you can see there, um, Bin Nye Special Red, which is a nice bright red as well. Um, then I black, straight up black, and also then I blood red. Um, I want to make sure I have my brushes, so what I use is well in the white. I have a makeup sponge, um, just a cheap one, a couple bucks at a pharmacy. Um, my white is so almost gone. I need to grab new. Um, and that's what I use for, well, mainly the white. I used to also use it for the black, but um, as the years went by, I kind of changed that into just using softer brushes and my fingers. Um, I use a, I don't know why you'd call this brush, it's like a sponge brush. Um, that's just to put in like bruising around the scars, I guess, and like indentation and the, the feather a little bit. Um, I use this brush for some small fine detail um, around the scars and this brush for extremely fine detail around the eyes and also the smile lines. Um, and just to draw it on originally, first go around. And those have my powder. Uh, I keep it in this. It's an old Manic Panic powder case, but actually the powder I'm using is Ben Nye as well. I use mainly Ben Nye, obviously, and I use a brush just to kind of get the extra powder off my face. Um, I also, at the end, finish with a sealant. Final seal, surprise, surprise, Ben Nye. And that's it. That's all my stuff right here in front of me. If you can't get into somewhere that actually carries Ben Nye, uh, Halloween stores, other places, I don't know where you find them, maybe dollar stores carry it all year round. Um, you can get these types of makeup. Uh, exceptionally cheap, I think it's like two bucks a container. And again, to make two separate reds, kind of mix a little bit of black with the red to get a darker red for the inside of your scars. Um, and this red is actually extremely bright, um, just straight up Halloween red makeup, just red cream. And this stuff, I use it sparingly. Uh, it drips a lot, which is good, I guess, for the Heath makeup. Um, it will not stay on your eyelids, that is for sure. And it does tend to crack. Um, I don't have a white right now. I think I might have a full one, but... So, black, red, and white. As I'm going through the steps, just if you're using these as opposed to what I'm using, just substitute the colors in. Now, starting with the white makeup, I'm going to go very basic fingers and rub it in the places. That I want a lot. Funny, I only started doing this slightly. Uh, it's probably after watching tutorials of people putting on foundation. Now I'm going to do possibly two layers of the white to get at least in a lot of the areas, um, like the spots where I just put it down then, because uh, I like it to move from extremely bright to dark in some locations. Um, I do a combination of patting the makeup brush and wiping the brush depending on where it is on my face but 
Now, right here, where to get those lines not to be colored in white, so later you have the places where you're going to draw in your wrinkles for this messy makeup look, you just crinkle up your face any different way. And it gets all of these lines. Now I'm going to start dipping back in to the container, taking out a little bit more just to fill in some places I don't feel are quite white enough. Now, like I said, I'm going to do two different looks here. So I'm going to go from a more clean face filled in look to the more messy style look because I, I like to run with both. Now he did it two separate ways here. Um, I've noticed in some pictures that you can see a great, a big cut right here where the makeup stops along the chin. Um, and I guess that's good for pictures, but I believe he also ran it below his chin here for the more authentic screen look, I guess. It's not like it's just a straightforward drawing on the face. Um, now I do some highlighted areas. Where this is just for like the more highlighted areas. Now right along here and here where the scars are going to go um, I tend to put powder on there, but you really don't need to, or powder, I tend to put makeup on there, but you really don't need to. I do like to make sure the ears are a little white in case they do stick out under the hair. Um, and as for the hair, while I'm just finishing up the white touches here, um, my hair is green, so I, I dye it green, but if you did not want to dye it green, I used to use a Manic Panic Die Hard is the name of it. It's like a gel. It's not actually a gel. It doesn't harden. Um, it's just a color. You can comb it through your hair if you want. Um, I used to just put it in by hand and mix it with some like spiking gel or something that really hardens the hair up. Um, then I would put it to get the dirty slept in look up under a hat. Like just stick it up under something, get it all dirty and messy um, and let it dry. Then after that, if you want a real fine hold, you can go in and hairspray it a little bit. Okay, what I'm going to do now is this is usually where I would powder. Um, but lately I've been adding in the lines for the scars. Now, the scars, my left side over here is the, I like to call it the bullet wound scar. It's kind of the larger scar. A hole with some scar lines coming out. Then there's a second portion of it that I think is disconnected from that, like that. And then over here, um, come midway between your nose and ear, and I kind of add a circle. Looks like a three, actually. And this one goes down much further. Uh, give them that. And now, for the lip line. I, I like to think of it as uh, the center here, like a U. And this piece, um, I imagine if you were to get hit, and this is how the scar was created, runs up through the lip. I think so. Again, this is just how I do it, and uh, I think it looks good in the end. I still haven't quite perfected the look for myself. 
Now I'm going to take the sponge brush that I spoke of earlier and kind of go around where the scars are placed and even drag them out with my fingers a bit. So this is just kind of for uh, depth around the scars to make it look like they're not just two dimensional on your face. Yeah, maybe you have a better way of doing that. Um, some people use wax or um, a thing called rigid collodion, which sucks your face in, actually, and it's really good. Uh, actually, I have a bottle of it right here. To do the layout, you can do this. Well, I used to use a dark red eyeliner, um, but you can use basically anything. You can use black, red, whatever. Um, I'm going to put down my base for my eyes now next. Um, just straight up finger. That's it. Try to get it all of the top right up to the tip of the eyebrow. And under the eye, um, not as far down as up. So, like so. Now again, this is just the base coat. I may add in another darker coat later. You can add in as many coats and layers as you like until you get there. Again, under the eye, just a small amount. Now, four. I'm going to do the second look later, so I'll leave it just like that for now. Usually I'll spread it up my face. Now, this is where I'm going to take this fine brush, um, well, one of the fine brushes, and I'm kind of going to drag that black out into a few of these wrinkles and the lines all around my face that is. This is not super fine so this is kind of smudge worthy. Um, Heath's makeup isn't about doing the makeup perfectly I don't well I don't think it's about doing the makeup perfectly. It's just about having fun with the makeup and kind of um, going to town on it. I've seen so many different takes on Heath's makeup that I, I absolutely love. Uh, now, this is not super messy. I will add in one drip line here. All right. Um, now I'm gonna take a fine line and take a little tiny bit of black just to add these to deep cut lines. Okay, and that's about it there. Um, between his eyes, he has, um, not everybody's brow furrows the same way, mine furrows actually down the center. He however furrows one, two, now. Never get both sides perfectly the same. All right, I'm going to dab in a little bit of white back over some of that there. Another nice thing about Heath uh, is that you can reapply your white right over the top of anything because um, during the film it looks numerous times like he had an opportunity to reapply. So 
So this is just adding in a second layer so it looks like a second day now is upon him. Because this is the part of the face I want to stay almost unchanging as my day goes by. A couple of highlighted white areas there. Again, as though he stopped somewhere and just applied literally out of a tube. That's that. Now I'm going to powder. Make sure every part of the face is covered. I usually start in the eye area. Maybe there's a better way people powder. That's how I do it. You want to make sure you've hit everywhere. Um, you can feel it after you've done uh, it. You can kind of feel that. It's no longer wet. Now, take my brush and just kind of wipe everything out of those cracks. Also, you can just add the powder with this if you like. I've seen people do that as well. All right. Now, moving forward from there, I have to draw in the actual scars now over the top of this makeup. Um, if you want to really quickly do it, I suggest just dipping your finger in red paint and wiping a smile on. That's it. Put a dark line through the middle. Just make it look like a cut. So what I'll do is hit it with a bright red. Hit it with a bright red. Bright red. So my bright red. Find where I drew my scars originally. Under the powder. I'm just kind of sketch it in. You now it depends on how large you want the scars. Uh, a lot of people do them differently. Like I said, I've seen them done so many different ways, and it always just looks cool. Um, I've seen some people with red almost all across the bottom of the face, and it still ends up looking like Heath and great in photos. Just a bloody smile is great in photos, I guess. Now again, this one I find goes down further. Um, um, if you're wondering why I'm putting this makeup on, you could probably by the time I put this up, click and go to the video. After I've done one layer like that, I would then, um, I'm going to add my crease lines, the smile creases. Um, now, this, where my smile line comes in, I want it to go to a little further than that so it looks more like he has a, a jowl there. And same with here, I'm going to bring it out a little further and let blood just crease up into my actual crease lines after as well. There, now there's my actual crease line. I run just a little bit of that. Also, he has very deep set um, dimples or like grooves in his face here. So sometimes I'll bring a scar in. Just to add more depth. All right, now after that, um, maybe I will put lipstick on, but I don't have my lipstick here right with me. To start, what I usually do is make sure I have all of my makeup and everything here with me. Touching the lips just with this makeup. Also, he's licking his lips a lot. The makeup should be down on the sides, kind of 
messy no matter if he has just reapplied or no <laughs> and that's it I leave this center portion white just so it kind of looks like a scar uh, bulges out a little bit there now I'm going to take my other darker red take my darker red and I'm going to go right into the center of these scars almost all the way to the edge I'm just going to splatter that on in there again if you're using the uh, dollar store makeup at this point you can mix some of the black with the red or you can I don't know maybe you can find a dollar store makeup that's a little bit of a darker red again this is a second ridge of red so you have your bright red darker red so then I would go even darker towards the center um, and add possibly some black to this um, which I'll just mix up right here in the palm of my hand with some of the red Grab a little bit of black so I get an extremely dark red so it looks like a another ledge um, have you done a Joker makeup tutorial? Uh, maybe I haven't seen it. I've seen a lot of Heath makeup tutorials, but I'd love to see one of yours. Um, you comment below. That would be great. I'd love to check that out. Um, maybe I'm doing something different from how you're doing it and it, it's going to work for you. Uh, that'd be great. Now, sometimes after I've added in these ledges, I want go back in over with some red just to really pop it out again um, with the bright red so I'm gonna just quickly do that this I imagine is again he just kinda re-tapping it back on and over his scars um, I've always been curious so when I watch your opinion on this uh, the makeup that he has out here in his skirt, do you think it's like a Halloween style makeup or do you think it's just his lipstick? Is it just his lipstick? Is that what it is? I've seen a lot of people do that as well and that actually looks really good as well because you get a perfect mixture with your lipstick. Entirely forget about the mouth for just a little bit, let that do its thing and you can come back to it in a minute and see if you've missed something. Okay, so I'm going to move up to the eyes now for just a minute. So I'm going to grab the black back again. Um, now as you can see where I put the powder on, it's kind of lighter now, so I'm going to just reapply right over the top of that powder. Now this is the layer that I'm fine with as the day goes by. If I smudge it or it moves around, at least I still have that under layer that's kind of going to stay at least a dark gray, um, if that makes any sense. My cat is in the bedroom listening to CBC radio right now. <clears throat> anyway, moving forward, I, uh, when applying to the eyes, I, li I like to make sure it's very noticeable that they're not just straight Beetlejuice eyes. Like it's not just a sleepy bag under his eyes. It is makeup plowed on here. So it's kind of dripping away. Spidering down his face a little. Um, you can look directly at a photo of Heath and get the exact placement of where he has the drips and such. 
I just tend to go with where I think looks good and shapes my face correctly. And moving around and really, really taking the time to look at it, see how it looks when I'm making the faces, right? Um, because it's one thing to put the makeup on. It's a whole different thing to, to carry the makeup. I, I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it does, for your sake and mine. All right. So that's it. I just basically touched up around the eyes, added in a few more lines here, and he's pretty. He's done. He's ready to go to the ball. What I would do then, usually, um, depending, two separate steps, you could powder again and add a whole new layer of all this makeup over the top to really crisp it and like just redo the exact same thing over the top basically, um, adding in some extra lines so it looks like maybe another day has passed, maybe it's come off and you're putting it back on again. Um, or you could do what I would do at this point. Um, to seal it up and this is the final seal I'm down to very little of this as well um, and basically give it three or four sprays over your face make sure your face is entirely covered uh, walk into the mist and then you're done put your hair down and get ready to go uh, now <laughs> that's one possibility I want to do now a more battle damage look over the top of this battle damage. I want to do a more Batman damage look over the top of this look. You imagine uh, scenes in the film like the interrogation scene. And what he has is, I'll explain it here, is you get kind of a smudge of makeup off this side and it goes in between where these lines are but it creates kind of a pyramid um, and a much smaller one here you can run it up into the second line it's just it's like it's been pushed up over his face yeah um, be careful of having makeup on your fingers if you rub them in the wrong place uh, it will well, a little smudge. You need to be rinsing and washing your hands during the process of doing this. Do it. Get a couple of extra brushes if you need. Um, I just have the few. I'll then grab um, a Q-tip. Uh, again, sharpened out to a tip, a point. And you can use makeup remover, um, put it over the Q-tip, and kind of wipe away some of these lines to bring back your skin tone a little bit more. I'm kind of run down into the eyebrow line. Um, again, you can look directly at a photo of Heath to see where his lines fall, or you can just draw along with your own. I usually just draw along with the ones I have there. I'll also do the same around the eyes, kind of smudging some black into those lines. So I'm rubbing away the white makeup here. Um, ideally, if I'd have known, you could do this during your process. So you can, at the beginning where I explained putting on the original lines, you could have wiped some of this away in the white as well. Depends on if you're starting out thinking you're going to have a more beaten up Joker or no. There you go. Again, your finger is a good option. If you don't have any style makeup brush or anything, you can do this entire look with just your finger. It's really not about being precise, but it's about having a few nice 
crisp lines, just a few. Um, you can use your nail to do it. I've used my nail numerous times to do this red line. Um, or you can just go right along with your smile lines, which is totally simple. Um, okay, so that's the entire that Joker guy, Joker look. Sometimes I'll do more, sometimes I'll do a lot less. Sometimes I won't go so deep into doing the scars and just kind of make them cartoony looking and add like a spiral to this side, depending on the event. Um, but yeah, um, I hope that helped. If you were trying to do Heath, I don't know, for Halloween, for any event, for a Comic Con. Um, if you have any questions, uh, anything else you'd like to see me do, um, I do do a couple other Joker looks. Just hit me down in the comments and I'll see what I can do. If you would like to see the process of doing this with Rigid Collodion, um, I could also do a separate video for that. And if you would like to see the process of me doing this with dirty cream makeup in five minutes, I could do that for you too. Um, there's a million different ways to do the Joker makeup and I love seeing them all. So again, if you have done the makeup or if you have a video of yourself putting on the makeup or anything really Joker cosplay related, share it in the comments. Let me know. I'd love to see it. Thank you very much for tuning in and watching. Um, now, if you were going to do the entire look, I have uh, the shirt and kind of most of the parts of the costume there. Basically blue or purple shirt, uh, green, green yellow tie, green vest, and you'll look like Heath. It's good. Um, dollar store is fine. Dollar store? I don't know if you can get that stuff at the dollar store. Um, go to thrift store is fine. Uh, I spent a lot of my years hunting for specific items. I'm still looking for a few pieces. Um, it's not perfect, and it probably never will be perfect unless I'm lucky enough to have Magnolia Clothers contact me and say, hey, we're gonna give you the whole suit. No, probably not gonna happen, right? No, please, comment below, please. No, no. anyway, moving forward, uh, yeah, just put it together. It's about getting into the persona of this guy, too. So, like, lowering your head, raise your shoulders a little. Get kind of in there. Um, get gross. Uh, now, a lot of the times I'm doing conventions in this, so I don't put the makeup all over my hands, but he does. So if you're going into an event, grab one finger full of each color and just kind of rub it into your hands. Rub it into the back of your hands and cut off your arm. Just make it look dirty. Um, or wear the purple gloves and nobody ever has to see your hands, but even when I wear the purple gloves, sometimes I put the makeup on underneath because it just, it works. It works for the character. It feels good. When I do, if I do have to take it off for some reason, people like to see it. Um, or at least I would if I was those people. Does that make sense? I don't know. The good cop, bad cop routine. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm... I'm the Joker. I'm not Batman. That's that was that was a lie. This is just a mask. I'm not Batman. Um, my hair is up. I have it under a toque. Actually, yeah, a Joker toque. Beep beep, Richie.